Burundi is a small East African nation. The Republic of Burundi is a landlocked country in the African Great Lakes region of East Africa bordered by Rwanda to the north, Tanzania to the east and south, and the Democratic Republic of Congo to the west. Unfortunately, 58% of the population is chronically malnourished. Only 28% are food secure. With a GDP per capita of 236 US dollars, it is the poorest nation on the planet. How is this nation one of the hungriest in the world? And why is Burundi poor? On the contrary, did you know that Burundi was a more vibrant economy at independence? In fact, better than the neighboring Rwanda and Seychelles who are today much more prosperous. Today, Burundi is a ghost of its former vibrant self. So how did Burundi end up being the poorest of the poor? There are several reasons and in this video, we feature five of them. Before I proceed, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't for more exciting and educative videos. Number 5. Droughts and other natural disasters Natural disasters through an already impoverished nation put the country into a state of crisis, causing food shortages and displacement. Burundi has suffered from an unusually high number of natural disasters. Droughts, torrential rains, floods and hailstorms have been particularly destructive in recent years. These natural disasters have contributed to the displacement of communities, destruction of homes, disruption of livelihoods, and the further decline in food and nutrition security. Other effects of these disasters include decreases in land productivity and an increase in crop pests. Regions affected by recent natural disasters are also at risk for permanent food insecurity and weak nutritional conditions. Overcrowded areas of about 270 inhabitants per square kilometer and up to 400 is the most densely populated areas and have contributed to greater food and resource scarcity in affected areas. Number 4 little land to support the growing population. Burundi is landlocked and its population is continually increasing. Land is the greatest source of conflict in Burundi. The country is overpopulated and rural, so land is valuable because it is a source of agriculture. Here land is a source of life and death. In fact, 89% of the population are subsistence farmers who depend on the land to grow food, for their families. Burundi occupies an area equal to 27,830 square kilometers in size, of which 25,680 square kilometers is land. The population density in Russia is 9 square kilometers and states that the average farmer in rural areas of Burundi walked an average of one hour to get to the nearest workplace and it took them 30 minutes to get to the nearest grocery. In addition, there is only one market day per week in many rural areas and there are no storage areas for perishable produce. With a fast-growing population and too little land to house them all, resources and livelihoods are more difficult to acquire and improve. Number 3. Inefficient management of public finances and resources by the state. The state of Burundi regularly interferes with the economy. It subsidizes fuel and rations, subsidized electricity. The government also influences other prices through state-owned enterprises and agriculture support programs. Economic freedom is not allowed, and this weakens entrepreneurial activity. The state also takes away private property from citizens. Why is Burundi poor? Poor economic planning and management from the government prevents economic growth. Number two, conflict. The continual cycle of violence and war has been a major detriment to Burundi's economy and has increased the amount of people in poverty in the country. Burundi is a country familiar with various military regimes since independence. 
these regimes have succeeded in appropriating state resources, while ordinary citizens, mostly rural farmers, have borne the brunt of the civil war. Burundi has been involved in a circle of civil wars since they obtained independence from Belgium in 1962. The nation has recorded five episodes of civil war that have claimed more than 500,000 lives and have produced about a million refugees. The history of conflict and leadership in Burundi has had long-term consequences for the state of poverty in the country today. Decision by several Western countries to discontinue aid to Burundi to compel its state to genuinely reform systematic issues that contribute to conflict is not helping poverty in the interim. In 1976, Colonel Jean Baptiste Bagaza took power in a bloodless coup. Although Bagaza led a Tutsi dominated military regime, he encouraged land reform, electoral reform, and national reconciliation. In 1981, a new constitution was promulgated. In 1984, Bagaza was elected head of state as the sole candidate. After his election, Bagaza's human rights record deteriorated as he suppressed religious activities and detained political opposition members. A decade of civil war followed as the Hutu formed militias in the refugee camps of northern Tanzania. An estimated 300,000 people were killed in clashes and reprisals against the local population with 550,000 citizens being displaced. After the assassination of Ntaya Mira, the Hutu presidency and Tutsi military operated under a power-sharing political system until July 1996, when Tutsi Pia Buyoya seized power in a military coup. Under international pressure, the warring factions negotiated a peace agreement in Arusha in 2000, which called for ethnically balanced military and government and democratic elections. Consequently, this cycle of war has created an extremely unstable political environment. What is more, the latest two civil wars, one from 1993 to 2005, after the brutal murder of the newly elected first Hutu's president Melkaya Dadai by the Burundi army officers were apparently behind the 1993 assassination which triggered widespread ethnic fighting in the country as per the United Nations report. The report, a copy of which was obtained Wednesday by the Associated Press, said the planning and execution of the coup was carried by the officers highly placed in the line of command of the Burundian army. Another war broke out in 2015 after the controversial re-election of President Pierre Nkurunziza for a third term on a technicality, and this further crippled Burundi's economy. Conflict hindered agriculture, the backbone of Burundi's economy. In fact, 90% of the population depend on agriculture for their livelihood. Due to Burundi's civil war, Poverty increased from 48 to 67 percent of the population between 1994 and 2006. Rising food prices, including a 28 percent increase in 2007 to 2008, affected families' livelihoods and increased their susceptibility to repetitive natural threats. These threats included flooding, drought, landslides and the impact of climate change. War also impeded manufacturing. For example, the 1993 to 2005 civil war caused manufacturing production to decline by an average of 13% per year between 1993 and 1997. These facts make it easier to understand why the rate of investment in the Burundian economy declined during the 1993 to 2005 civil war years. The rate of gross investment declined from 17.5% in 1990 to a mere 5.6% in 1998. And last but not least, missed opportunity for Pierre Nkurunziza. Following the gradual return of peace nearly 20 years ago, 
Pierre Nkurunziza was elected president in 2005. Drawn from the majority Hutu ethnic group, Nkurunziza ended 25 years of pro-Tutsi military regimes. The minority Tutsi make up 14% of the population and the Hutu 85%. In the next five years, the president and his party, the National Council for the Defense of Democracy, Forces for the Defense of Democracy, went about consolidating power. Nkurunziza's victory was Burundi's loss. Amid the repression of opponents, the country's economy slowed down. Foreign capital took flight and infrastructure crumbled. At the end of his third term, the leaders of the CNDD FDD party were happy to see the back of the eternal supreme leader who had become a liability. That's it for today and thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video.